Mr. Morrow, Todd, thanks for coming, uh, helping us out on short notice. Appreciate that. And I wanted to ask, you, uh, give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about Island County or Island Transit Service. I, I think it might have been um, kind of glossed over quickly. Island Transit, uh, by its virtue of its name, it's an island. In fact, it's two islands, not just one island. It's two separate islands unconnected by a bridge. You have to go around into, into other counties to get get the uh, other island. So uh, you have some unique challenges, but you're trying to update service, expand service, extend hours, and of course you moved to Sunday. From a rural transit perspective, what were the challenges, uh, what are the challenges you're facing doing that? Yeah. Thank you very much, Congressman. Uh, one of the main challenges right now, and I think it exists in pretty much every industry, of course, is having the workforce available to do the things that are needed. In our case, uh, we just um, started another tra class of driver trainees. That's great, but we still need more. And in order to complete our transition, as that you alluded to, to um, what we call Island Transit Maximize, to expand service, to really meet all the needs um, throughout the day, we need to add a couple of hours to the end of the day. And that's the last thing that we need to do. And it's gonna take us probably about seven to 10 more drivers in order to do that. Um, so it's going to be several months off. We had hoped to do it last year. Um, so that is always challenging. Operating costs are definitely always higher in rural environments. And that's something that all of us um, that provide transit across America and particularly rural situations know. But just because we're in a rural environment doesn't need, mean that those people deserve any less the services that all Americans enjoy. So on extending hours to the end of the day, why, why is that so important? Well, we have essential workers, for instance, that rely on transit because their transportation costs are so high, transit allows them to save money. And these are the people that work, for instance, at Walmart, um, one of our busiest, um, uh, commercial entities on the island that serves the people that are there. Their hours are till 11 o'clock at night. And so those workers that work those shifts are not currently able to use us because we don't have those hours. That's what we're, our goal is to add those hours so that we can support those workers. And then do you have specific service? You mentioned Na Naval Air Station Woodby Island, which is, a, um, I should note, the home of half of the P-8 fleet and uh, all of the uh, Growler fleet, the electronic yeah. attack aircraft. So you're welcome, America. Um, can you, do you have any specific service uh, for NAS Woodby Island? Yes, thank you for asking. We actually have on-demand direct service where individuals who are properly credentialed, including service men and women, as well as civilians that are there, um, we take them from their neighborhoods directly on base. And the wonderful thing about it is it avoids the congestion at the gate and leading up to the gate, and it saves them money. Many of them are a single car household, and so this frees up the car to be used by the spouse that's not working there. You mentioned a challenge, or maybe, maybe you didn't see it as a challenge, but the service you provide for folks who are disabled or homebound or otherwise, about 13% of your ridership, is that right? Yep, exactly, yep. 13% of our service is paratransit service. Obviously, that's expensive because you're providing a door-to-door -door service. So what we try to do is batch together as many trips as possible. There's software that we use. This is um, something rural transportation providers have been doing forever, is figuring out ways to efficiently transport uh, people uh, where they need to go. And, but it is more expensive. We've combined it now with our on-demand service and other areas so that we can uh, do the, all of those things together more efficiently. Um, can you, uh, how, how does that compare to say your, your neighboring transit agencies? Um, well, uh, on-demand service is something that's starting to be seen more and more um, across the country. Um, we're, we've just started it. Um, there are some that still do not have it. Um, and then if you're getting to the point of how do we connect up with other systems, um, we have arrangements and we do connect both our paratransit and our fixed route scheduled service so that people can make those connections. However, if you're a veteran um, and you need to go and to veteran affairs or medical services, that can be harder in a rural area like ours because um, there are no direct bus routes off the island to take people. So there are actually social service agencies that provide that service with our help. We provide them the van, the training, we maintain that van so they can do that. 
Thank you. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, thanks for making the trip out, and hopefully we'll see you at home. Uh, see you at home. Thank Feel you. Back. Gentlemen.